Welcome back to the studio. Today we're going to do something a little different with this massive Sonic Mega 8KS from Frozen. Now I'll be honest, I'm getting a little bored with the behind the bench 3D printing videos. I know, I just said that while literally behind a bench, but what I mean is the boring standard talking head 3D printer videos that we've all been watching for years. I want to not only see what these machines can do, but I want to see the results in use. I want to film scale models and miniatures or have practical prints used around the house and the ranch. 3D printers are just so much more capable today than they ever have been before. And they're just so much more than the specs that get read off to an audience. In fact, what type of 3D printing content do you want to see? Tell me in the comments below, or do you just want to see it all? Tell me that too. Okay back to the machine. So we have a couple of videos planned to highlight the different ways that you can use this Mega 8KS. But for this video, we printed a Star Wars TIE Fighter in Frozen's RPG Gray Resin. And we'll bring it to life at the end of the video, so stick around because we're going to use some paint, some cinematic shots, and some effects to show you just how much you can achieve with resin 3D printing. Now at first glance, the machine is big. It's the biggest resin machine that I've ever used. And it has a build volume of 330 millimeters by 185 millimeters by about 300 millimeters in Z. The printer weighs about 57 pounds. It's a beast and it takes up a considerable amount of bench space. It's about 19 inches wide, about 15 or so inches deep and about 23 inches tall. It's a big machine. I really like the transparent green flip-up lid, uh, lets you kind of see the print progress from multiple angles, and the touch screen is okay. It's about a three and a half inch uh, screen, very simple, uh, not really much to do on it other than to select prints and uh, start and stop them. No Wi-Fi on this machine, so sending prints means slicing it uh, to USB and walking them over, which honestly has never really been an issue for me because ideally, uh, especially with resin machines, you should be checking to make sure the build plate is clean and you have enough resin in the vat before you start the print anyway. For slicing, I use Cheetahbox Pro. Now my contact over at Cheetahbox was awesome enough to provide me with a pro license for free to create content with, so a huge thank you uh, to Cheetahbox for that. The Mega S was already in the slicer, uh, which was kind of nice. Um, it was just a matter of adding the printer and then adding this new RPG gray resin, which they didn't have. Adding the new resin to the slicer was simple. I did check the Frozen website for their recommended exposure times, added those to the RPG gray profile, and uh, that was it. We're printing a TIE Fighter model that I bought from Gambody. In fact, it is the same TIE Fighter model that we will be printing life-sized up here on the ranch over the next many months. In fact, if you didn't catch my previous video, I'll show the clips again here, but I just unloaded almost 3,000 pounds of Polymaker filament last week to prepare for this huge build. It's going to be epic, so make sure you're subscribed and ring that bell so you'll uh, be able to follow along. Now stick with me, we'll look at the printing, washing, and curing, and then the print quality along with some fun content that really highlights what resin printing can be used to. Stick around. Also, a huge thank you to Frozen for sending this machine over, and along with the washing cure station for us to share with all of you. This is about a 15 hour print, and after pouring resin in the vat, which I can't believe that was an entire bottle of resin, and the vat still looks empty. The vat is massive. So after pouring the resin, I simply selected the model and hit print. No leveling, no adjusting, nothing. Just walked away. This machine uses ACF film instead of the more traditional FEP or PFA that you might be more familiar with on other resin printers. ACF stands for Advanced Composite Film, and it has a higher tensile strength than other films, and it stretches less, meaning there is less movement of the platform needed to release the print. That gives us more reliability and a greater lifespan of the film. The next day around noon, we had this beautiful TIE Fighter hanging on the massive build plate, but the build plate is so huge that I didn't even want to take it out of the machine. So I cheated and I just grabbed a scraper and some gloves and I popped the prints right off the build plate and dropped them into the wash station one piece at a time. I put about a gallon and a half of 99% IPA in the wash station, which is just crazy. Um, the thing holds like 27 liters. And then I started washing. Uh, the smaller parts would fall through the French fry basket in the wash station. So I washed those by hand. The larger pieces were in there for about 20 minutes or so. After washing, I let them drip dry for a few moments before I loaded them into the cure station. Some of the parts on the wire tray and the others on the turntable. 
This is by far the largest cure station I have ever used. It's massive. And if I had one critique though, um, I've been spoiled with cure stations that include heaters. But although this one does not have a heater, it has two 1700 RPM fans that move a lot of air and they completely dried the prints within minutes. After drying, it was cure time. So I set the timer for 30 minutes on the cure station and let it go. Now from the outside looking in, it has some impressive UV light coverage, but just in case I did reach in and rotate the larger pieces on the shelf to make sure light was getting everywhere. And now I do plan on printing a helmet with this thing. So having a larger cure station like this is going to be epic. So stay tuned for that. Hit that subscribe. This TIE Fighter model isn't complicated. It's only about nine pieces or so. Once the curing was done, I glued it together, sanded a few spots to make sure everything fit together properly, and I was gonna call it finished. I mean, it's not bad. This darker gray colored resin looks really good, but at the last moment, because I want to film some fun shots with it, I decided we'd paint it. So I hit it with a couple of coats of a lighter, glossy gray primer, and then my wife, Mrs. LM, who happens to be right here. Hello. Mrs. LM went ahead and she painted the wings black and I think it turned out pretty awesome. A quick note on the RPG resin. It is a softer, uh, more flexible resin. It's designed for miniatures and tabletop gaming. So prints can take a little abuse, even a few drops before breaking. I was surprised by this when I was removing supports, they popped free from the model and they just bent out of the way rather than breaking or cracking like other resins that we're used to. Kind of cool. All right, so the reason we painted it was because we are gonna have a little bit of fun here in the studio printing and filming Star Wars models. Then we're throwing them into After Effects and Final Cut Pro to just see what we can come up with. Here's what we came up with. We're no experts, so don't set your expectations too high, but it's fun and it's just a glimpse of what you can do with these resin machines now and some cameras and lights. The quality is just so freaking good, it's hard to believe that these are 3D printed. Well, what did you think? I told you I wasn't an expert. Maybe gratuitous use of TIE Fighter screeching sounds. But anyway, it's a lot of fun. We get to literally 3D print whatever we want, and then we get to play with it. So I promise I'll get better, and we're going to do a ton more fun things. Um, but anyway, my final thoughts on this Frozen Mega 8KS. It's an impressive machine. Uh, the machine itself is about $14.99 in the US right now. And I think the bundle is actually on sale right now. It's $1,920. Now I know that sounds like a lot of money, um, but resin machines, especially this size, they're not cheap. And a cure station this big and a wash station to match, um, that's definitely why the price is there. Uh, quality, um, I am super impressed. Um, some of the best quality prints that I've ever had in resin just came off of this machine and I can't wait to do more. So I'll have links on the screen um, and in the description. Definitely feel free to go check them out. And uh, yeah, super impressed. All right, back to the other part of my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And before we go, let me give a huge thank you to my Patreon and YouTube members. I couldn't do this without you. We'll see you in the next one.